Hey guys, this is part two of two uh, concerning the Hanyang VFD. Uh, in the last video, we went over how to wire it and uh, some very controversial ideas on wiring gauge. Uh, check that out by clicking right here. There's a card. Um, in this video, we're going to go over a little bit of wiring just to get the Modbus uh, set up via serial port so that your control computer can run the VFD for you. In my case, Linux CNC. If you're using a different control like Mach 3 or 4 or some other control, I can't help you. I don't have any experience with those. Um, if you're using Linux CNC version 2.7 or later, the Hanyang VFD software driver is built into Linux CNC. If you're using version 2.6 or earlier, you'll need to install the driver manually. Uh, check the link in the description. There is a link to a zip file on my Google Drive where you can uh, download that folder and it's got a bunch of information, basically everything we discussed in the last video and this video in written form to help you get up and running. Also goes over updating Linux CNC. If you're on 2.6 or earlier, just upgrade to 2.7. It's not that big of a nightmare. Uh, I thought it was going to take like two hours to get my configs working, but it took like 20 minutes. So uh, I highly recommend updating your uh, Linux CNC. And um, let's see, what else? Yeah, I think that's it. Um, let's go over wiring real fast and then we'll turn this thing on and it will be loud and annoying. So I'm gonna zoom in real fast on these uh, three little 26 gauge wires. Focus. Okay, so the green wire is hooked up to pin, uh, you know what, I have it written down so let's make it easy on myself. Pin AMC, that's uh, Alpha Mike Charlie. The white wire is hooked up to pin RS negative, that's uh, Romeo Sierra negative, and the black pin is, or the black wire is RS positive. That's Romeo Sierra positive. Okay, now I'm going to show you a picture of the RS242 card uh, that I have plugged into the back of my control computer. This basically converts serial to Ethernet, and that's what you'll need because you can see there's three pins, and I don't have that picture in front of me, but I believe it's uh, TX plus and minus plus a ground maybe or something else. Uh, just Look at this photo and then go back to the video, you know, one minute ago and see how I have it wired up. And this will allow Linux CNC to control the VFD. It's amazing when you have three phase and your software controls the VFD for you. Let me zoom you back out. Now, unfortunately, this is going to be loud because I have to turn on some power supplies uh, to get the VFD running. And then the VFD's got a pretty loud motor in it as well. So I'll turn those on and then we're going to go over programming. All right, I'm going to zoom you into the uh, keypad. Now, uh, I talked about this a little bit in the last video, but one of the great reasons to get this VFD is they're showing up everywhere, they're somewhat inexpensive, and uh, so far it's been a really, really good VFD. The worst problem by far is deciphering the manual, so hopefully with this video that makes life a little easier for everybody. So there's quite a few things you'll need to know. Well, there's a few things you'll need to know about your motor before you can do the programming. So go look at your motor nameplate. Now mine's the 2.2 kilovolt uh, VFD, which means it'll support up to three horsepower. My motor is a 220 volt three phase, full load amp rated at 3.2 amps. Service factor amps is uh, 3.6. My understanding is this is something you don't want to run at over long periods of time, so I just lock mine out to 3.2. Uh, it means I give up a little bit of power, it's fine. And it's an 1800 RPM motor. Uh, this whole document is in the, uh, on my Google Drive. <laughs> Click the link. Oh, also there's a link to the uh, adapter that I just showed you pictures of. You can get that on Amazon. I don't get anything uh, by you shopping via that link. So the first thing we're going to go over is program number one. And program number one means that the run button is going to be controlled via Modbus or from Linux CNC in my case. So the way we do that is we hit program, we scroll up to the one. Uh, you can't really see it, but number one is blinking. And we hit set. We're going to change this value to a two and then we're going to hit set. Now you, you change values here, so we'll, you know, there's one, there's two, hit set, program one is complete. Program number two means that the operating uh, signal is also going to be coming from Linux CNC. So if you're going to be controlling this manually, uh, you can skip uh, programs one and two because it's already set up for manual use. 
Uh, to program program number two, we hit program, scroll up to two, it's already there. Hit set, we set this to a two, we hit set again, program number two is locked in. Next we're gonna do programs three, four, and five. These are for the main, bass, and max frequency in hertz. Now, I live in the US where we run on 60 hertz. Uh, in other parts of the world, I believe they run on 50 hertz. This was set up with 50 hertz by default, but let's just double check it. So main bass and max voltage, or I'm sorry, frequency can all be the same. So we're gonna go program three, set, 60 hertz. Now, if we wanna move over to change that, we hit this button, and then we could change that to a five, a six, hit set, program three is locked in. Let's do program four, set, 60 hertz, set. Program five, see how it increments all, all by itself, set, 60 hertz again, set. Now we're gonna skip down to program uh, eight, and this is for our max voltage. In my case, it'll be 220. So we're gonna arrow up to program eight and hit set. 220 volts is already in if we needed to change it. In the US, you could really run this off 230. If your motor is rated at 230, that's fine. Most things are rated at 230. I left mine at 220, it doesn't really matter. Um, hit set and uh, 220, let's see, program eight is locked in. The next program I'm gonna show you, but we're not gonna do it. Uh, we're gonna go to program 13. So we'll go down to three and move over and up to 13, hit set. Now if we change this to an eight and hit set, it will factory reset the VFD. So we're not gonna do it in this case, we'll just hit stop, and that'll kick us back to the screen. Uh, the next two programs you'll wanna check are programs 14 and 15. These are the acceleration and deceleration uh, rates in seconds. So program 14, I've got my acceleration set to take place over two seconds. The lower you set that number, the faster your motor will accelerate. Also, the more amps you'll draw. Uh, two seconds is pretty good, I leave it at that. Program 14, same thing. Basically, by setting this at two seconds, that means when we shut off the motor, it doesn't just cut voltage instantly, it ramps voltage down over the course of two seconds. Now, depending on your drivetrain, it may take 10 seconds to coast to a stop. This is not gonna be able to control that. If you wanna be able to stop instantly, you're gonna to need to look into a braking resistor. I don't have one. Um, it would be nice, um, you know, I've crashed a couple of times and hit the e-stop and wished it could stop instantly, but it didn't. Um, for me, it's really not worth the extra expense. So uh, I leave it at two seconds. Next, we're gonna go down to program 23 which enables reversibility. So we're gonna go program, change the one to the th the one's place to the three, over here and go up to the tens place is a two, hit set, and that is blinking a one, which means uh, reverse is enabled. If you set it to, I believe it's a two, it could be a zero, then it will lock out reverse. Refer to the manual if you want reverse to be locked out on your motor. Next, we're gonna jump up to programs 44 and 45. Now, I don't actually know what these are, but you wanna make sure they're programmed this way. So let's go program 44. Okay, a two in this spot means that, it means switch forward. I don't know why that's important, I just have read that it is. So make sure program 44 is set to two. Make sure program 45 is set to three. That's switch reverse. Okay, then the last thing we need to do is put in the programs for our motor. So let's stop out of that. And we're gonna go to program 141. Go down to the ones place, over to the hundreds place, set. And I've got mine set for 220 volts already. Of course, you could jog over and change that to 230 if you wanted. Uh, 220 is fine for me. Set, and our motor voltage is programmed in. Next, we're gonna do motor amps. That's program 142. We'll hit set. I've got mine set at the 3.2 amps, which is my full load amp rating, not the service factor amp rating. If you wanna put the service factor amp rating in, so be it. If your motor only lists one amp rating, just go with whatever, whatever it lists. Next, we're gonna do program 143. Okay, uh, this is the number of poles that your motor is. On a three-phase motor, you'll need to know how many poles there are. Four is common, so I have it set to four poles. Hit set. 
And then the last one, and this is also the most difficult one to get right, is program number 144. And this is your RPM. Now if you're using a direct drive or a one-to-one -one drive uh, belt ratio or gear ratio, then you'll just set it to your motor rated RPM. So at 60 hertz, you'll get full RPM. Now if you're using uh, a belt drive like the G0602 lathe that I'm using, um, you'll have to figure out what this is and frankly it just takes some trial and error. Now on the G0602 there's a low range and a high range. I only use the high range gears or belts and so uh, if I remember right that's a 750 RPM, a 1200 RPM and a 2500 RPM. So when I'm in those ranges uh, I actually have a little cheat sheet here. I change program 144. If you have the same lathe and the same motor I have, you'll uh, set that to 650 when you're in low, 1057 when you're in medium, and high will be 2057. Now, in Linux CNC, anytime you make a change to this, you have to restart Linux CNC. Uh, that doesn't mean you have to reboot your computer, by the way. Um, and then it will refresh. Now Linux CNC also has a gear change functionality. However, I've never been able to get it to work. I would love to get it to work because that means I can select the gear change right inside Linux CNC. And then I would, I believe I would still have to manually change the program, uh, but it means I wouldn't have to restart Linux CNC. And the reason why that's great is because I have to restart Linux CNC, I can only write a program for a single gear. If I have to change gears somewhere in my program, I split it into two programs. I run program one, change gears, uh, change the VFD setting, restart Linux CNC, then run program number two. It's a bit of a burden, but whatever. The last thing I want to talk about, and I honestly don't remember if I made this change or not, but you're going to want to take a look at it. I'm going to show you uh, the manual I printed in booklet format. And this is program uh, 164. Communication baud rate should be set at 19,200 uh, bits per second. Uh, so I'll show you uh, 164 will be a 2, and over here 165 will be a 4. That is for communication data method 8 echo 1 for Romeo Tango Uniform. I have no clue what this means. Just make sure that yours is set up this way. So let's go ahead and take a look at 164. And sure enough, there's a 2 for 19,200 bits per second. And 165 is a 4 for 8 echo 1 for Romeo Tango Uniform uh, Communication Data Method. I have no idea what that is. Hit set. Just double check those. I think that's the default setting, but double check them anyway. And that is it. If you get all this going, uh, you will be able to fire up Linux CNC and then you can hit, uh, in fact, let me try it on my, I'm not sure if I'm booted up actually. Oh, I'm not booted up. You would hit F9 on your keyboard. You'd hear the relay click, meaning your uh, VFD is now accepting commands. And then you can hit F12 to speed up your RPMs and your motor will speed up. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. If you have questions, post them below. Uh, if you'd like to learn anything else about this uh, VFD, more on manual use, uh, you know, there's all these different LEDs. They all mean something different. You can get it to show you hertz or, uh, let's see, actually, can I do that? Yeah, so here we're looking at, like, power, forward, hertz, and A are lit up, and it gives us some piece of information. Um, they all do something, but I, I don't remember, so... Uh, check out the manual. If you can't figure something out, go ahead and shoot me a message. Leave a comment below. I'll try and help you the best I can. Uh, see you in the next video.